This was bullshit. <laughs> 20 bags of it, though technically not all of it came from bulls. Half may have been from dairy cows. I was an environmental education volunteer with the Peace Corps, assigned to the small agricultural town of Villanueva, Nicaragua, right in the heart of Central America. The bags were a homework assignment, and my students delivered. Manure was ubiquitous in that region where cattle seemed to outnumber people. Without mature trees in the school or vicinity, shade was scarce. We entered the classroom, a sauna under the blazing sun. Already dripping with sweat, I explained the composting process in my best non-native Spanish. Now it was time for some hands-on practicum. Returning outside, the group dumped the contents of their bags into a single steaming pile of organic matter. <laughs> to our base, we added blackening plantain peels, dry corn husks, and scraps of paper. Finishing with a stir, in a few weeks' time, our pungent green waste would become earthy black gold. This, in turn, would fertilize a small tree nursery we were as assembling in the dusty schoolyard. Weeks before, the students had gathered shiny brown seeds of all kinds. The compost would accelerate their transformation into fruit trees, shade trees, and precious hardwoods. The goal was to address deforestation while also keeping garbage off the streets. Trees and trash. If I had to sum up my service in two words, those would be the ones. I looked forward to class each day, beholding verdant shoots emerge in the weeks that followed, sparked feelings of wonder and awe. We made these little green lives happen. Heading home from school one Friday, not long after, and feeling upbeat, I smiled, waved, and greeted the neighbors I saw along the way. Adios, Doña Gladys. Adios, Juan de Dios. Adios, Jeremias, they replied back. This was the cultural norm in, in rural Nicaragua when addressing someone in passing. Acknowledge with an adios and continue. I understood the logic. Why say hello if you aren't stopping? <laughs> I tried this in the US, but for some reason, walking by someone holding up a hand and calling out, bye, <laughs> doesn't have quite the same effect in English. I greeted the last neighbor and arrived home, welcomed by a bushy beard of pink and purple bougainvillea cascading over the front gate. I passed through my modest concrete house to the spacious and closed backyard I shared with the neighbors. My own little compost pile and tree nursery I had created back there were thriving. I did some chores, made dinner, and went to bed that evening feeling content. Late that night, unfamiliar sounds outside my open bedroom window pulled me from sleep. Guttural breathing and the thud of heavy steps. As my groggy head turned to the source, a shadowy horned figure peered through my window. Petrified with terror, I thought, is this the end? <laughs> my eyes adjusted, and I slowly recognized the creature to be my neighbor's cow. <laughs> of course. He occasionally brought it home from pasture and spent a night in the, our shared yard. I calmed down and returned to sleep. Yet disaster remained. The next morning, walking out back, I nearly dropped my coffee. No, 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 idiota! The cow had done much more than walk by my window. It had chewed through nearly all of my saplings, my pride and joy. I was so frustrated I wanted to throw my mug at that beast, but I paused to breathe. Though profoundly annoying, there was something amusing here. Just like my students, I had used manure-based compost to fertilize, probably from that same cow. Now it had consumed the plants sprouting from its own excrement. <laughs> this was just the circle of life. Simba, I have a lesson for you. <laughs> On Monday, back in the schoolyard, I encountered more tree problems. This time, weather was the culprit. The seedlings had withered from scorching weekend heat with no one around to satisfy their thirst. 
we would need to pivot to salvage the survivors. I asked each student to take a sapling home to nurture and ideally to transplant one day. Recognizing their homes likely included chickens, pigs, and cows as well, I didn't dare to hope. As for my trees, only one resilient mahogany, about two feet high, survived the bovine attack. I decided it was big enough to live on its own in the countryside. Surely that would be safer than my backyard. I invited my closest friend in Villanueva, Michael, to help me pick out a spot to plant it. Grabbing the tree, we departed the center of town, leaving behind brick streets for dirt roads, then on to a dirt path. We passed the last house and crossed a broad meadow where there once stood a forest. The Tawny River meandered just beyond, flowing gently and widely. We picked a quiet spot above the flood line and upstream of the sudsy water where children bathed and women laundered. I dug a hole and there I planted the tree. On the walk back, I shared with Michael my self-doubts. I had been questioning my impact and the value of my service in Villanueva. I wondered how I might do more. Though the Peace Corps provided us with few tangible resources, we were eligible for a small grant from the U.S. Agency for International Development. Michael thought seeking funding could increase my effectiveness, but we agreed if I pursued it, I should involve community leaders. I'll hold a meeting, I said. He helped me develop a list to invite, including the high school principal, reps from the mayor's office, some business owners, and a local doctor. The challenge would be ensuring anyone would come. I told him that I'd already learned the hard way that good weather was a must. Early in my service, I once sat alone in a candlelit community center waiting for people as the storm raged outside. It was futile. When it rained in Villanueva, the power went out. Bad weather meant stay home. It's not a bad custom. To this day, I long for it when driving in the rain, or rather when subjecting others to my driving in the rain. <laughs> I told Michael about another failed meeting I had experienced. The weather was perfect that time, yet still few attended. Was there food, he asked? No. His face made it clear that that was a rookie mistake. If I wanted attendance, I would need to provide a meal. It was agreed. I would offer dinner. I drew up the invitations, highlighting the incentive. Fried chicken, beans and rice, and Coke. The plan worked. Everyone I invited attended, and participation was enthusiastic. We discussed air, water, and other environmental themes. Ultimately, the group project, the group agreed the project should focus on basura. Trash management in Villanueva occurred at the household level, generally by burning it. Children and adults would drop their scraps of plastic and paper throughout the day. In the afternoons, a lady of the house would sweep up the debris and set it on fire. The approach meant not only less material for composting, but also pervasive toxic soot and smoke. Trash that wasn't swept up accumulated in ditches and along fences. It blew through the fields drained to the river, or got stuck in the mud. The grant funds we requested were modest, so we needed to focus our scope. We drew up a work plan to install a network of metal garbage baskets around the center of town. We also proposed an anti-litter campaign and two community cleanup events. I was lucky to be able to glean some lessons learned from a friend and fellow volunteer who had recently led her own community cleanup. This was in the Green Mountains, several hours east of Villanueva. No landfills existed near her town, and because her project involved only non-hazardous paper and plastic, her plan was to bury everything. She instructed the volunteers to dig two deep trenches where they would deposit the items collected throughout the day. Unfortunately, when my friend arrived at the site, ready to cover everything up with dirt, she found not trash, but smoldering ash. Either the habit of burning was too ingrained, or the group misunderstood that the entire point of digging was to avoid the need for fire. Reflecting on this, 
I sought to avoid accidental incineration for our project. I requested to include in our grant written commitment from the mayor's office to transport any waste collected to a landfill. The funds arrived and we completed the project. The end of my service wasn't long after that, after we had installed the final waste basket. It was bittersweet to leave behind what had been home for two years, but I left satisfied and knew I would be back. I returned to the US and began the next chapter of my life. Sure enough, a few years later, I ventured back to Villanueva. I was so excited to reconnect with my old friends and neighbors. Of course, I also couldn't wait to witness the latest advancements around town. Walking down those familiar streets, something strange seized my attention. 10 feet above the ground, two of my waste baskets tied to trees, their bottoms removed, and a group of teenagers shooting hoops. <laughs> In serio, what have they done with my baskets? I felt annoyed and personally affronted, but instead of reacting, I reflected. These were not my baskets. They belonged to the community. What's the lesson here? Perhaps I had overlooked the importance of, of including youth in my project planning meeting dinner party. Had I done that, our group might have concluded that recreational opportunities, such as basketball courts, were at least as important as trash cans in the park. Walking further, I saw that the mayor's office had already installed new cans to replace the repurposed ones. Relief replaced annoyance. Then, learning that the town had even begun a program to collect trash from homes, I felt pride for Villanueva. I don't take credit for that new program, but I found the progress satisfying nonetheless. Certainly my little project in classroom lessons couldn't have hurt. There's an old proverb that states, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The best time, the next best time is today. It was roughly 20 years ago that I planted a mahogany tree by the riverbed. I had almost forgotten about it. A couple years ago, I reconnected with Michael on social media. As we were catching up, he mentions to me in Spanish, do you know about the great memory you left behind by the river? There's a tree there. 25 or 30 meters high, and everyone knows you planted it. I was physically overcome with emotion, tears of joy. We don't always get to see the outcome of what we sow, but we do the good deeds anyway. So plant a seed, share an idea, stay hopeful, and keep smiling. Thank you, and adios. Jeremy Bauer, ladies and gentlemen, Jeremy Bauer.